If you are just getting into stock investing, one of the most prominent pieces of advice you'd get is to always be on the lookout for opportunities to earn dividends. It's understandable, and to be fair, it can be really good advice. When you have a reliable, profitable dividend stock in your portfolio, you don't just earn money when the stock's price pops. You also earn regular dividends that come in periodically, adding even more value to your portfolio and the stock within it. But the financial landscape is shifting significantly, and with the advent of new investment opportunities and the current economic realities on the ground, there are some people who believe that dividends might not necessarily be the right choice for you as a value-seeking investor. Several experts are now sounding off on the fact that dividend stocks might be outdated or suboptimal. So what exactly are they complaining about? In this video, I'll be explaining all you need to know about dividend stock, what they are, why many investors tend to find them attractive, and what are some of their shortcomings. So let's cover the basics. When you want to invest in the stock market, you simply do your research. Find a company whose stock you think will surge in the near or far future and invest in it. This way, when the stock does pop, you make money. But there's also a class of stocks that tend to add some additional value. These are called dividend stocks. Basically, these are public companies that take their profits and share them among shareholders in the form of dividends. Essentially, a company sells its shares and keeps a record of everyone who purchases these shares. When the company reports its financial performance, usually every six months, the profits that it makes are then distributed and shared amongst all shareholders based on the number of shares that they own. Most dividend paying companies tend to be both consistently profitable and committed to distributing their dividends for the foreseeable future. Now, they might not necessarily be as exciting as some of those stocks that tend to fly high in the market like Tesla, but if you play your cards right, dividends can actually account for a significant portion of your earnings over time. It's easy to see why dividend stocks tend to be pretty popular. Many investors are looking for additional streams of income beyond just the shares they own and can sell, and dividend stocks give them just that. Plus, considering the fact that these companies are historically profitable, there's a lot of upside to dividend stocks for sure. Finally, I should point out that getting your actual dividends is pretty easy. To collect your dividends on a stock, you'll need to own shares in the company through a brokerage account or a retirement plan. Once the company announces and pays the dividends, the money will be deposited into your account and you'll be able to access it. Easy peasy, isn't it? Now that we understand the basics of dividend stocks, let's examine some of the reasons why a lot of experts are starting to think that they might not necessarily be the best bet for investors. One of the major points to note is the trade-off between receiving dividends and enjoying your capital gains. Now, for those who might not be aware, capital gains are simply the difference between the amount of money a stock is purchased for and the amount of money received when it is sold. If you buy a stock for, say, $1,000, and you proceed to sell it for $1,200, you've basically enjoyed a capital gain of $200. But as you can imagine, selling that stock off means that if it's a dividend stock, you've most likely lost out on the dividends that might have yielded down the line. So what's the issue here? Well, capital appreciation, or capital gains, actually tends to work out better for investors. This is because historically, dividends actually reduce stock prices immediately after they are distributed. The market tends to believe that these funds are monies that the company could have used or invested in expansion or other ventures, and companies often see slight drops in stock prices once they distribute their dividends. Sure, you get the income immediately, but it also affects the value of your stock and can halt its momentum. And if you're in a bull market where stock prices are moving up rapidly, then you could lose a lot of value down the line just for the small dividends that you'd earn at the moment. Another major criticism of dividends tends to come in the form of taxation. This can be a biggie. At the end of the day, the government does its best to tax every piece of income that people generate. And governments across the world have been especially focusing on taxing income from stock sales or dividends. So when you get paid a dividend, remember that it's not free money. That stuff is taxed or at least it is in New Zealand. When you consider the fact that many developed countries today have lower capital gains tax rates than those for income, you can kind of see why dividends might not necessarily be the best way to go. Capital gains taxes in the United States are capped at about 20%. In countries like New Zealand, capital gains even go untaxed. So you see, compared to some other investment strategies, dividend might not necessarily be the most efficient option from a tax perspective. So far, we've mostly spoken about the impacts of dividends for investors. But what about the companies themselves? 
Because trust me, many of them tend to feel the impacts of dividends that they actually give out. Companies can choose to pay dividends for different reasons. But the most popular is the fact that dividends allow them to share profits with shareholders, who are really the part owners. The problem though is that the money being distributed could have been used for other things. These things could include investing in expansion, growing into new fields, developing new products and services, all of that. The crazy thing is that many projects like these are given up, as the funds are paid out instead as dividends. If the funds were to instead be invested in such projects, the performance of the company would improve, therefore increasing the stock price, giving the investor some sweet capital gains. With dividends, companies now have to forego these opportunities in favour of sharing profits in the present with investors. And in a highly efficient market, this might not necessarily be the best bet. Next, we should also discuss the fact that dividends tend to not be as consistent as many investors would like them to be. In a market that's booming, companies would have easier opportunities to make profits. And by extension, investors would be able to expect higher dividends. But when things pull back and the market starts to shrink, most companies tend to immediately look for ways to save money and cut expenses. And as you can imagine, dividends are usually the first to be affected. It's easy to see why. Companies understand the fact that their stocks tend to drop as soon as they pay dividends. At the same time, they'd very much rather to keep some of the money paid as dividends so they can weather any market downturns. So they cut dividends significantly to preserve their runway and keep their operations running. This means that for investors who are looking to get consistent returns, Dividends might not necessarily offer the value that they seek. Okay, our next point is a bit of a big one, and it'll address one of the biggest misconceptions when investing. Over the years, it's been a prominent belief that a company paying high dividends is automatically a good investment. Investors tend to equate high dividend yields with companies being solid investments, but this is honestly not very true. In fact, if a stock price of a company is falling due to poor performance, the dividend yield would actually go up. In investing jargon, this is called a value trap, and they are to be avoided. And of course, you should remember that the fact a company's stock price is increasing at the moment doesn't necessarily mean it's a good investment opportunity too. Instead, remember to always focus on the research. Be aware of both the fundamentals and the technicals, and examine all of the parameters to determine whether a company is a good investment or not. If you focus solely on the dividend yield, you might end up shooting yourself in the foot. In economics, there's a popular concept known as opportunity cost. Basically, the opportunity cost is the alternative foregone when money is spent on something. If you have $1,000 and decide to get a new iPhone, then that money could have been used for something else, like fixing your car, paying off some of your student loans, etc. That thing that you failed to do in order to pursue your endeavor is basically the opportunity cost of that endeavor. When it comes to investing, the usual opportunity cost of dividends is the future gains you might have gotten from the stock if its price rose even more. And for companies, the opportunity cost of paying dividends would be the many alternative things they could have done with that money if they hadn't paid the investors. As an investor, your job is to make sure that you're picking the right choice at all times. And if this means not picking a dividend stock, just because you think there are other opportunities, then so be it. That brings us to our next point, the importance of diversification. As an investor, one of the biggest risks you can put yourself in is when you invest in just one asset class every time. Looking for dividend stocks is great, but you also need to remember to build a well-balanced portfolio that allows you to reap market-beating benefits at all times. By relying only on one asset class, you expose yourself to risks when that asset class sees a downturn. So always focus on diversifying your portfolio and ensuring you get as many asset options and classes in there to protect yourself down the line. So what alternatives are there? For one, you could invest in real estate investment trusts or REITs. These investments provide attractive yields and they allow you to generally protect yourself from inflation. You can find different types of REITs that offer exposure to different areas of the market. And in a market where home prices are surging, this could be a pretty solid option. You could also try closed end funds, which offer an attractive income source from illiquid loans or bonds. These funds have a fixed number of shares transacted in the open market, so they usually sell at discounts to the underlying net asset value. Income exchange traded funds or ETFs are another solid option for income investors looking to avoid dividend stocks. As long as you find an ETF or a mutual fund with a solid portfolio and liquidity, you should be able to maximize the value of your investment as much as possible. If you have trouble tracking your portfolio, you're not the only one. The team over at ShareSite have created an awesome platform that makes it easier to track the performance of your stock and fund investments. With integrations to over 200 brokerages around the world, including Sharesies, Perla, and Robinhood, and 400,000 global users, 
They make everything easier, so you can focus on building your portfolio while they do the hard stuff. If you'd like to check them out, using my code below, you'll get four months free on their annual plan. If you want to try before you buy, they also have a free membership that you can give a go. So there is no doubt that dividend investing is one of the most popular investing strategies. And you can see why. Dividend stocks are reliable and they provide an additional income stream for investors. But with the market's changing dynamics, you might find that dividend stocks aren't perfect for you. Remember, you get the best returns when you're aware of the market conditions and can properly diversify your portfolio to maximize results. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel down below to see all of my future content in the personal finance and investing space. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.